Welcome back, my friends. As you can see, we are joining Allison again, but we are not in the freshwater gallery. We are actually in the temperate gallery today, which is where Allison is typically spending most of her time. And we are behind the scenes at our ancient fishes exhibit. If you've been watching our virtual visits, this exhibit might be familiar to you. We actually watched Jeremy do a really cool time-lapse video of feeding this exhibit. So today we thought we would follow that up a little bit and do a little bit different feeding video for you today. So Allison, would you like to tell our viewers what we're gonna be doing today? Yeah, sure. So we are going to be um, feeding a couple of the different fish in here. We're gonna be focusing on our Australian lungfish and we're also going to be focusing on our rope fish, uh, which are these long, uh, green, kind of eel-looking fish that are right below me here. Awesome. So, Allison, why do we use these feeding strategies? So, um, we'll use a lot of different feeding strategies in any one exhibit. So, uh, one of the common ways that we'll feed is just a scatter feed. Where we'll just throw food out. Um, and everyone can kind of grab whatever they want. Um, but in a lot of cases, we wanna make sure that certain fish are getting certain types of food in the right amounts. And so we will target feed them, and that can be putting food on a feed stick, um, like you might have seen Jeremy do in the video. Um, it can be hand feeding, it can be um, other types of, you know, giving them food on tongs, stuff like that. Um, and that way we can keep track of how much they're eating and what they're eating. Um, and we'll notice really quickly if, for instance, um, there are appetite decreases and we'll catch really early if there is something going on that we want to know about. Awesome. Well, uh, I think maybe we'll let you put a little food in the water, see if we can um, get some of our fish to come up and, and take some food. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So the fish that are right down here, these are the rope fish. And a lot of people, when they first see these fish, think that they are um, actually eels. But they are not eels. Um, they are related to another type of fish that we have in this exhibit called bikers. And you can see that um, these fish are pretty comfortable coming right up to the surface of the water. One of the reasons for that is because they're actually capable of breathing air. That is very cool. And here we have a Delhezi biker that has come up as well. Just thinking about eating something, not sure. And hand feeding um, these fish is something that uh, we didn't initially intend to do. Um, actually, we used to target feed them. So we would have a feed stick um, and we would put it in the water and put the food towards them. Um, but these guys are really food motivated. And so really quickly as we, you know, we're putting the uh, feed stick in the water and trying to get them to come over, they actually started jumping the gum and coming up to us. Um, which uh, just became faster and easier to just feed them like this by hand. Um, Allison, that actually brings me to a question. How long does it take to train fish to um, feed in this manner? So to do this, this targeted feeding? Um, so it really depends on each uh, individual fish. Um, and it really varies a lot between different species, but it usually will depend on how food motivated they are. So if you have something that they want, um, <laughs> it's usually actually pretty easy to train them. Um, so in this case, food is a really big thing that these guys get really excited about. Um, but once, um, once we kind of, once we've established that kind of, I have food, you'd like to come up and get it, and we have this kind of comfortable um, ability to interact with them, um, we can then expand on that and we can do things like target training and stuff and that can actually happen really quickly with just a you know, few sessions. Uh, so a lot of people think that fish aren't very smart or that they can't learn things. Um, not true at all. Uh, they're, they're actually, especially when it comes to food, they can learn things really fast. That's really cool. So there you go. It depends on how, how much they like eating. <laughs> But yeah, I think that is a common misconception is people don't think fish are very intelligent, but we actually train a lot of our fish here at the aquarium to do these unique feeding strategies like Allison is, is showing you here. And as you can see, our 
rope fish are now pros at this hand feeding. <laughs> and so we also have our Australian lungfish is up here and he's getting some um, delicious earthworms, which is one of his favorite treats. Um, so throughout the week, he'll get a few different types of food. Um, earthworms are definitely a favorite. I think he's still chewing there, so we'll give him a second. Um, but he's another one where um, initially we started just doing stick feeds with him um, and eventually it came to the point where he would just come up to us. So um, it's great for a couple reasons. One, it lets us know that uh, he's pretty comfortable with us. Um, he feels safe around us. Um, and then another reason that it's great is that it gives us the ability to um, kind of check on him really closely. So you can see he's coming up here and we're getting a really close look at him. He isn't concerned about me you know, touching him and that gives us kind of a groundwork for if we need to have the vets come and look at him or we wanna check out his body condition or he has a scale that looks funny or something like that, we already have a groundwork laid where we can um, get really close to him without stressing him out. That's really important and really cool. I think that's another big piece of why we choose to target a lot of our animals here at the aquarium. It allows us to um, have them participate in their own health care. Um, we talk about this a lot with our seals, but this is definitely not exclusive to our seals. We want our animals to have a very low stress experience, if at all possible, when getting those checkups. So doing something like handling the fish like you saw Allison doing a moment ago allows that for that fish to be a really comfortable experience, which I think is really cool and something that you might not know about if you don't get these cool insider glimpses um, behind the scenes like Allison is giving us today. Allison, um, do you have anything else cool you can tell us maybe about the rope fish or the lung fish or just the fish in the ancient fishes exhibit in general? Because uh, this is a really cool tank and I think a lot of people don't know all the cool stuff about this tank. Yeah, so there are a lot of cool things in this tank. Um, the theme of the exhibit is ancient fishes, which a lot of times people aren't really sure what that means. <laughs> um, but what it means is that all of the fish in here are um, from lineages that are um, essentially go way back in the evolutionary record. Um, so millions of years. Um, and in a lot of cases, these fish are the only extant members of um, their group of fish. Um, so like all of the lungfish are part of a group of fish called Sarcopterygians. Um, big word. Um, <laughs> Allison throwing some science at us. Just throwing it out there. Um, but they are lungfish and then another type of fish called coelacanths are the only members of this group of fish that are now all the rest of them are extinct. Wow. So it's kind of like having dinosaurs um, in a fish <laughs> tank, which is I think is really cool. That's incredible. Um, and then one of the other cool things about having all of these ancient fish um, is that they have characteristics that are also ancient. So characteristics of fish that may have been alive millions of years ago. Um, so a good example is the lungfish. Um, so like their name suggests, they are actually able to breathe air. Um, and there are several different types of lungfish. Um, and so they have, um, some different body shapes and some different ways of um, um, breathing, but uh, in general, all of them can breathe air. And they are also, um, that group of fish is actually the precursor to uh, what eventually became tetrapods, which is us um, and all of the other animals that walk around on the land. Um, so very, very cool animals. And then we also have, um, fish in here, like as I mentioned, the bikers and the rope fish are all capable of breathing air as well. Um, and one of the cool things about bikers um, that is, I don't know if we can see any right now, but one just kind of swam past. But if you look at their jaw, their jaw actually resembles more of a tetrapod jaw than a normal fish jaw. Um, so just a really interesting interesting fish in here in general. So there you go, ancient fishes. It's all explained thanks to Allison today. <laughs> well, I think at this point we'll say thank you, Allison, so much for giving us another really cool glimpse behind the scenes at our ancient fishes exhibit today. Um, I know I have a whole new appreciation for all of the care that goes into feeding these animals on a daily basis. I hope all of you at home do as well. 
Remember, if you have questions, please put them in the comments. Between Allison and myself, we will get those questions answered for you. And we hope you join us again very soon. Thanks, friends.